right. Well, I want to welcome everybody to the program. This is CTE Live, and this is our River Cruise panel. Uh, we're going to talk about Christmas markets today. I know Christmas might be a long ways off for some people or something that you're not even imagining right now, but um, those are one of the things that there's only a few sailings a year, and you have to be thinking about it now. So first of all, I would like to welcome everybody coming on to the call. Uh, I do see some some clients on there and some new names too. So we're glad to have you. Welcome, welcome to the program. Um, happy Friday, happy Friday afternoon, everybody. Um, I'd like to welcome my panelists. We have first of all my lovely wife Kelly Graham, our double agent, and we have uh, also on the call we have Kathy Liu, our BDM for Crystal Cruises. Hey, Kathy. Hi there. We have Kathy Brock, RBDM for Ama Waterways. Hi, Kathy. Uh, we have Eric Molina, BDM with Viking Cruises. Hey, Eric. And Kathleen Levy from Key Accounts with Uniworld. Welcome all. And Jennifer Collins, National Account Manager for Tout Cruises. Hey, everybody. We have Marilyn Conroy, Vice President of Sales for Riviera River Cruises. Hey, Marilyn. Hi. And we have Kristen Steele with Avalon Waterways Key Accounts. Hi, Kristen. And we have Pam Hoffey, COO of Globus Family and also Managing Director of Avalon Waterways. So thank you, everybody, for being here. Thanks, guys. Thank you for hosting us. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, just a couple of housekeeping notes to everybody uh, on the call today. Um, please type your questions into the chat box. I'm going to put a message in there right now, right after Lou did. Hi, Lou Mello. Um, and so you can put them there. You can put them in the Q&A. If you happen to be watching this as a recording, you can just email me, michael at mgatravel.com, uh, or you can type something in the comments there. And if I don't know the answer, I will ask one of these professionals here, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. But if you do uh, are on the live call this right now, then just type them in and that I won't answer them until the end, but I'll present them to our panelists and we will answer them as best we can. Um, so without further ado, let's start with uh, Crystal Cruises. Kathy, do you mind sharing your screen and talking to us for about uh, four minutes? On, on yeah, your not product? at all, not at all. Let me... So uh, like I said, I'm just gonna talk real briefly on um, the on crystal, basically, because let's face it, we're all going to be talking about Christmas markets, and uh, I don't want to just reiterate the same thing. So I'll kind of go over what's different about crystal, and then I'll highlight a couple of our Christmas cruises. Um, but I'm going to talk really fast because there's a lot to say. And if you've been watching the industry news, we are bringing back Crystal Mozart um, back into our fleet. I don't have any slides to show of her here because we are updating those. Um, that, that literally just came down the pike this week. Um, along with other news with Crystal, but nevertheless, uh, today I will be featuring our uh, Rhine class ship. Okay, so what's uniquely different about Crystal River Cruises is uh, first and foremost our service. We love our crew on board, they are a family, and they are the reason why um, we are so good of, about what we have to offer on board. Um, I give all the accolades to them, and second to, to that would be our food and beverage service. Uh, accommodations are fantastic, we have an upscale casual. Um, ambiance, it's unregimented, and we have nightly entertainment on board as well. Uh, on top of that, we do have select shore excursions on every port available to you. So when you are on a Crystal River cruise, it's going to be a true um, experience, a uh, true vacation, if you will. So um, I'm going to just kind of slide over here, and this is what you're going to see on our river ship. Uh, this is your quintessential river vessel. Um, and we have at maximum 106 guests to a maximum 68 crew member uh, until the CDC and CLIA comes out with their policy. Uh, this is what I'm going to stick with. Um, we will likely reduce the count. I just don't know to what. So for now, the capacity is 106 to 68 guests on a, on a true um, long ship vessel here, okay? Some amenities that we have offer would be our select wine, champagne, coffees, and spirits. Those are available to you 24 hours a day, 24 hour butler service, etro, it's an Italian 
fashion house uh, amenity, as well as our Caudalie, which is a French uh, brand for shampoos and all those uh, soft, um, soft hardware, prepaid gratuities, select complimentary short excursions, again, complimentary short excursions on every port, uh, Michelin inspired cuisine. So you have um, just delicious fine wines and, and, and uh, great meal there. And it is all in minute. So it is prepared right then and there as you request. 24 hour room service, nightly turndown service, ultra thin TV. So it's very high tech in every suite, um, one touch lighting, iPads, unlimited Wi-Fi. This is complimentary as well. And you're probably wondering, well, what more is there? You know, what's more about Crystal? Here's our top 10. We actually offer, we have an all-inclusive, all-sweet king-size bed um, on, our, on our ships, uh, European butler service in every suite category. We have the largest suite on the river uh, waters. Um, twice the number of crew per guest in the industry standard. The most spacious ships carrying 45% fewer guests. So you have all that space. And again, right now with everything that's going on with COVID, um, you're going to want all that space so that you're not just right up against each other there. Um, so it's a great, it's a great vessel to be on. Michelin inspired cuisine, fresh lobster, Dover sole, uh, caviar, all of that. And just an FYI, we do fly in our, our, our main lobsters um, on a weekly basis. Flexible dining. So you can dine where you want, uh, sit with who you want, and we have up to five dining venues for you. So you're not just um, stuck with whatever's available. You have options there. Abundant choice of uh, short excursions, as I mentioned earlier. And additionally, once you get off the plane, um, you are on a, one, or, one of two of our private motor coaches with free Wi-Fi on board, upgraded lavatory, and an espresso machine on board. Um, the youngest fleet in the river industry is, is something we pride ourselves on. We have four uh, brand new vessels, I want to say. Uh, two came out in 17, two more came out in 18. Um, they are wonderful. I've been on them myself, and I love being on board. Here are some pictures that I have of our ships. This is your... Uh, Kathy, you got 10 seconds. Just oh, 10 seconds. <laughs> I'm going to flip through these real quick. So it's just some pictures of our vessels. This is one of my favorite shots right here. Um, bathroom is extra large. Here are some on board. We have a pool on every vessel. And let me get through here. We've got a number of Christmas markets uh, voyages for you to experience. So just go ahead and check us out online, contact Michael, and he'll get you booked. And we'll be glad to have you on board very soon. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you. I'm sorry. Kathy. That's okay. We'll have a minute to talk at the at the end of all of our presentations. We'll have a minute to talk about Christmas markets uh, separately. So um, don't worry if you didn't get that one in. Okay, I'd like to welcome next is Kathy Brock with Ama Waterways. Take it away, Kathy. Thank you. I have to tell y'all, Michael has really challenged us here. Number one, only four minutes. And number two, talk about the Christmas markets. And I am an admitted addict when it comes to the Christmas markets, having done it seven times and really bitter about missing out on number eight. So first and foremost, they don't decorate a tree here and there in Europe. They decorate entire villages, towns, and cities. And it's very much of a local tradition. This is when the locals come out. Um, they stand in front of these market stalls. You smell sausages and roasting, nuts roasting. You don't have to travel over Christmas. Markets open based on Advent about the 24th or 25th of November. Uh, I love this picture mainly for the picture down in the lower right hand corner. If you'll take a look there, it's obviously a multi-family group that joined us on a Christmas market. And each of these little uh, three little boys and the little girl have the little Austrian hats on. And you can imagine the memories that these kids have from that experience. So a great family travel at holiday time. The food and the wines and the street food are the best in the world. Uh, they have a hot mold wine called Glühwein. It's always uh, served in signature mugs similar to this. And you walk around with this hot mold wine in your hand and the other hand holds those, it holds those sausages, which are so incredibly amazing. 
Uh, also, people are looking for longer trips these days. So add a pre and or a post in our Danube option, please uh, add the three nights in Prague. Right now that's an offer for free land in Prague and our cruise manager goes on the whole thing. Just for your information, please, we were the only US flagged ship to operate last year during 2020 in Europe. We sailed for four months with 1,500 guests with no issues whatsoever. So we have the protocols in operation. We also never recirculate air on our ships, which is huge. Our signature cabin design is called a twin balcony. It has actually a French balcony with a step out balcony next to it. Has to have 210 to 235 square feet to accomplish this. That's why our ships are typically 156, although last year we did 100. We have the award-winning Ama Magna, which if you're from the South, you'll understand when I say she's a double wide. She's twice the width of a normal river cruise ship, and she has four restaurants and five wine bars, and her average cabin size is 355 square feet just the perfect transition vessel for people who are moving from ocean to river or want to expand on ocean into river. These are the free land offers we have available just for the month of March. If you would like those three nights in Prague, as long as you reach out to Michael and his staff and put a deposit of $400, there's nothing else due until 90 days from sailing. You secure your sailing, you secure your place. And I'm telling you, there is very little space gonna be available in 2022. Those uh, bookings are incredible. Three weeks ago, we announced the first ever in the industry, what I have to call a world river cruise. Now the ocean ships have been world cruises forever, but we introduced this and it is just exploded. And as a matter of fact, on Wednesday, we had to announce a second one. This is 14 countries over seven rivers and 46 nights. Same cruise manager the whole time. Absolutely an amazing experience going from France through all the countries along the Rhine, the Mine, the Danube, the Mosul, and of course the Dutch waterways. 10 seconds, please, Kathy. That's okay. Here's my last one right here. <laughs> uh, Ama waterways. Ama is the Latin derivation of the word love. So we say the story continues and Ama is truly the heart of the river. Did I do it, Michael? Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Both you ladies have done it right on time. Thank you very much, Kathy. Okay, let's see. Next, we have Eric Molina with Viking Cruises. Eric, you want to take it away? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Michael. I appreciate it. And I'll just get this uh, on the screen there. And that should be sharing. So thank you, folks, for joining us. And Michael, for, for hosting us. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Christmas markets in a little bit. But I wanted to, you know, since we haven't sailed in quite some time, all of us, um, from, a, from a consumer standpoint, right? You folks at home, thank you for tuning in. And we are optimistic about sailing here in 2021. So uh, remind you, we are on our 23rd year anniversary at Viking. We can proudly say by the year 2022, we'll be sailing on all seven continents, visiting over 95 ports, uh, 95 countries and over 400 ports of call, five of the great oceans, 20 of the mighty rivers, and I, and I know we're trying to talk about river cruising today, specifically Christmas markets. I, too, am pretty disappointed that I didn't get to sail on the Christmas markets this past, uh, this past fall and winter. And um, I, can't, I can't say enough about the experience throughout the markets. And, uh, you know, we're going to be bringing a, a unique experience to the Mississippi come 2022. So we're finally going to be U.S. bound with regard to river cruising, sail with our expedition ships in the Arctic and Antarctica and also closer to home with five of those great lakes. But again, just a reminder for, uh, for folks that uh, uh, don't really remember who Viking is from a small ship expert standpoint. We wanna bring folks into the closer to the destination. We want you to over, overnight and uh, overnight at embarkation and disembarkation. We bring over two decades of expertise right into the heart of destination. Very innovative with our ship design, uh, we don't really know the passenger count for here in 21, but we most likely will be sailing at about 
25% reduced capacity of 190 maximum guests uh, under normal circumstances. But we do remember own and are operate our ships in Europe, Russia, and um, and we, we we take that very seriously from a uh, from a standpoint of that truly is the backbone of Viking, our our crew, our staff, the ability to deliver uh, on the experiences that you're looking for. Uh, again, Michael's going to be great at what he does. He's going to put together the perfect journey for you. May have you know go through those decisions prior to sailing, uh, and then ultimately we look to deliver. So we don't want to be everything to everyone. We want to be hyper focused extremely destination oriented cruise line, offer a highly inclusive product, be a completely efficient operator and continue to hire and retain the best staff in the industry. Uh, we truly feel that we're the thinking person's cruise. We're carefully curated for discerning travelers like yourselves, very much a complete immersion into the country, village, town, and cities that we're sailing within and through. Uh, it's all about connecting with fellow travelers, activities on board and as well as ashore and traveling to, uh, at the end of the day, explore, learn and understand. So uh, the inclusive value, and I think uh, all of us can really attest this is we're all really in that small ship category and classification, that inclusive value that we all bring to the table, specifically with Viking, something planned for you on a daily basis, all your meals, tours, excursions and port taxes already built into the price point. Some fun things like the wine, beer, and soft drinks included at lunch and dinner, especially coffees and teas, uh, and then all your port charges and government taxes. So we really don't want to do any nickel and diamond. So I'll be back a little bit later to touch on some of the Viking differences and what we do with regard to the Christmas markets and how extraordinary that experience can be in Europe. And I, I would say it's really done like no one else. Back over to you, Michael. Thanks, Eric. You're right on time. Great job. Thank you so much. And I, I just want to mention to all of our callers, I, we hate to limit, you know, to four minutes, but with eight people, you know, that's 32 minutes right there. And we want to have time to talk about risk Christmas uh, markets and answer your questions and things like that. So Kathleen Levy, Uniworld, please take it away. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you all for joining us today. And I want to say we are starting back cruising in Egypt in April. So it has begun. Yay. So exciting. Uh, obviously, we're going to talk about Christmas markets today. So I won't spend time on that. But I just want you to know that we're back. And I just heard this morning that Spain is going to start letting us in um, is by the end of May. So we hopefully will be, and that probably will be Portugal as well. So hopefully we'll be doing the Douro um, by the first part of June as well. So Uniworld, what makes us a little bit different? We are the most all-inclusive with the most amenities. Our service is absolutely outstanding. Our tagline is no request is too large, no detail too small. Um, so if your clients have any special meals or they really want to do anything special, that can all be arranged for them. Our ships are award-winning. Our cuisine is farm to table, very delicious, fresh ingredients. Our chefs, when we dock, go in and actually pick the ingredients. We don't have any waste. And of course, our all-inclusive shore excursions are curated for really unique and special things. So what's included? We have one of the highest staff to guest ratios, all your gratuities, your airport transfers, butler service and every suite, 24 hour room service for every stateroom. As I said, the cuisine is locally sourced, unlimited beverage, including premium spirits and excursions. We're the only cruise line that has onboard fitness center on every river cruise and of course, Wi-Fi and entertainment. And Christmas markets, this is just a little picture as you can see. We dock right there, and I think we can all say this, is we dock right in the heart, so you're right in the heart of these small towns and really can see these Christmas markets. And of course, it's not just the markets, so of those of you that haven't done it before, it's also the decorations. Um, these little towns decorate, as you can see, this is one of my favorite ones, decorated all with teddy bears. And just to go through some quick itineraries, we do have Christmas markets, Parisians, of course, Paris. And when we go during the holidays, we have what we call generations, which means activities for children and for teens that are specific for them. Um, but of course, for holiday travel. And then of course, um, largest Christmas market in Germany, you learn how to make some German fruitcake. Uh, you can do the Rhine one where we get 
pretzels and Christmas cookies and a vinegar tasting. And then um, Nuremberg to Vienna, fairy tale towns, chestnut, Knops Distillery for those that want a little more alcohol, a little more adult. The Danube, Hungarian sweet hot honey wine, and of course seeing the carolers. And then Christmas and New Year's, don't forget those as well, uh, with Mozart and Strauss comp concerts and Midnight Mass. We have some great offers out there right now. You can save up to 30% and with air discounts of saving 500 with private car transfers as well. And on behalf of Uniworld, I hope that was four minutes. And I thank you all for sharing your afternoon with us. Well, wow, thank you, Kathleen. That was fast. You actually have 50 seconds if you <laughs> want to cover anything else. <laughs> I talk fast anyways. And uh, yeah, we'll just, well, let's just keep it moving. How's that? And anybody with any questions at the end when we're all available, that would be great. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. So let's see. Next up. I believe we have uh, Oya Bekasoglu with Emerald and Scenic Waterways. Take it away. And, and Oya, you're on mute. Oh, oh, there you go. Sorry. <laughs> well, hello, everyone, and uh, welcome on board. And thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. And I'm really honored to be here. My name is Oya. I represent Scenic and Emerald Cruises. Um, as you can see on this picture, um, we have river and ocean lines. We are an Australian company, um, started our journey 36 years ago. Uh, we are family owned and operated and we also uh, make our own ships. Um, Scenic Rivers was launched in 2008, Emerald Cruises, which I'll talk about, 2014. Scenic Eclipse, the world's first discovery yacht, 2019, and Azura will be launched in 2022. So Emerald Starships, we, we kind of say Starships, and she was born in 2019. Our scenic brand is all-inclusive, and we kind of realized that not everybody wants to have all-inclusive. That's how Emerald Starships um, were launched. We call them um, Starships, and you'll see some pictures. We have an exceptional emerald value. Um, we are very nicely inclusive, I would say, and it's a hidden gem in the market. She was launched in 2014 and five years in a row, we have been awarded for the best value on the rivers. When it comes to emerald, it's quality, the value, the service, the freedom, the experience. I can just go on and on and on because we include your airport transfers. You don't have to buy the air from us. All your dining on board, um, complimentary wine, beer, soft drinks. We also have um, beverage packages if you wanted to have your beer and wine all unlimited. Oh, sorry, it just went too fast. Um, of course, we include our excursions, Emerald Plus experiences and Emerald Active activities, um, all your tips and gratuities on board, onshore, airport transfers, I was telling you, Wi-Fi, they're all included. So at the end of the day, it becomes really an exceptional value that you will always remember. This is she, starships. I say it's like sparkling. You will, it's very contemporary. You will see a lot of glasses, mirrors everywhere. It's very open and welcoming environment. Also, as a scenic group, we are very well known with our innovations. This is just only one of them, because I'm just talking about Emerald now, that we do have a heated indoor pool. As you can see right here, it's large enough. It's like a one car garage and you can actually like swim and do the laps. And at night, we raise this button, kind of like dry it off and voila, at night it becomes a cinema and popcorns are on us. So it's really a very cool space. Um, of course, Christmas markets, um, we have, we, you know, came up with this, um, this year, actually it's new. It's only five days. It's great. If you have never been on a river, it's a great way to taste it. It's short, uh, five days in total. You can, of course, do pre and post and make it larger, but this is my favorite itinerary, especially after being kind of locked down for over a year now. If you really wanted to go and just do your Christmas shopping, we have a, a, um, a group allotment for actually Michael. Please talk to him. But it's just a short you know, uh, way of showing you will be in Vienna, 
Budapest and Bratislava. And as you can see, all the inclusions, it's really awesome. And we'll talk about it a little bit later. We do um, decorate our ships also. So this is a real picture from Emerald uh, from previous year. So you will really feel um, all the way the festive. And it's me right here. <laughs> I've been um, experiencing it. It's beautiful. I think Kathy was saying, it's just really magical. It's like a fairy tale. Christmas market is just, I, I, I have really no other way to say, but it's like a fairy tale. I, I love it. I love it. Some pictures. 10 seconds for you. Yep, I'm almost done. Just showing the pictures. And this is where you will be staying. Grand balcony, just, you know, show you. And this is our um, largest owner's one bedroom. And thank you. Done. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, we have some comments. Like, we would really love to have an, uh, all eight have, you know, 20 minutes each. But I don't think uh, any of our viewers or even our panelists want to be here that long today. So, uh, <laughs> but maybe we can do something like that in the future. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Oya. Okay, uh, Jennifer Collins with Talc. Uh, now, please take it away. Thank you. If you're not familiar with Talc, we're a 96 year old family run company who focuses on land programs, and we have nine river boats as well. When we decided to build our river boats mm, about maybe 15 years ago, we looked at all the inventory that was out there and we realized we wanted to be relaxed like we are in the hotels that we stay at on land. And we wanted to be a very inclusive product, but we wanted to take our expertise like we have in our land programs with our excursions to the water. So that's exactly what we do. On each vessel, we have four TAUC directors. So we have a cruise director and three directors that are off on the excursions every day, executing them, making sure that they go as we wish. Our operations department is, spends a lot of time on the research and development about two years before any new itinerary is launched. And then we run through those itineraries several times before we take out our first group of guests. And we design all of the excursions because we wanna make sure that our guests see the destination in the best way possible. So I'm gonna give you some examples. Going to Lovequitz Palace, instead of going in during the day, we wait till it's closed and we go in after hours, we bring in caterers and performers and it's just us inside. Our guests love it. We do the same kind of thing in Chateau Bizy along the Seine. We have many meals ashore, like in Paul Bocuse's restaurant in Lyon. We have family itineraries. Even on the Christmas markets, we have a Yuletide itinerary as well. Four families designed for three generations. And that always comes with an evening in a private palace that's open, usually only to dignitaries and to tout groups. When you're traveling on a Tauk River cruise, absolutely everything is included. You land at the airport and you don't have to worry about spending money on one gratuity. You can drink whatever you'd like to. It's premium wine, spirits, everything's included. And again, when we take you on the excursions, they're Tauk excursions. So instead of seeing Giverny when it's crowded in the middle of the day, this is how we see Giverny. We go before it opens and our guests get to experience it the way Monet actually saw it. When we take our guests to the Louvre, again, we don't like to go when it's so crowded. We have exclusive experience when we get to go after hours and it's just us inside. So those are the kinds of focuses that we do on many of our river cruises. And I just wanted to show you some pictures of the brand new Andorina. She will be launched this year on the Doro. And uh, each of our river cruises also has a fitness room as well. And we don't usually talk about the 400 thread count sheets or this crystal stemware, but I think if you take a look at this vessel, you'll feel you could fit here too. So I wanted to thank you all very much. We have several Christmas markets itineraries and when the conversation moves over to Christmas markets, we can jump in there. And thank you. I know it's extremely challenging for all of you to figure out which company to go with because <laughs> we all have the same size vessels. We all go to the same ports. We all do something so similar and there's not one bad product out there. No matter which product you go with, you're gonna have a good time. But no, but whatever you'd like to do, talk to Michael and his associates. They have the expertise to guide you in the right direction to say, hmm, maybe this one is better for you because these are the things that you like to do. Thank you all. Thank you, Jen. 
You have 20 seconds remaining. Lucky me. All right, we'll seed it to, um, we'll have more time for a Q&A and talking about Christmas markets. Okay, um, Marilyn, you are next. Tell us all about Riviera River Cruises, please. Yes, I'd be delighted to. Make sure my screen comes up. There we go. Sorry, from the beginning. Wunderbar. You know, I think Jen said it very, very well. There's, there's so many uh, river cruises out there and we all do go to very similar places. It's, it's hard to choose, but you, you really can't go wrong. Uh, I think each one of our products has some unique selling proposition. But about Riviera River Cruises, uh, we're not a household name. Um, my friendly competitors here today have probably been in the North American marketplace longer than Riviera, but we're certainly not new to the travel business. We're the UK's largest tour operator and having been in business for some 37 years. Uh, 14 years ago in the UK, they entered the river cruise market. And then just four years ago, we launched in North America. And as you can see, we've already been the recipients of some pretty prestigious awards and accolades. So why should you sell Riviera? Why should you buy Riviera? In terms of our USP, it's price value. Uh, we believe that we give you more for your money. We offer beautiful, spacious ships, which are top of the premium line in terms of the hardware and the food and the service. And we are so confident that you're going to love Riviera, that if by day two of your trip, you are not absolutely satisfied, just tell the hotel director, and if we can't make you happy, then we will pay whatever it takes to bring you home and give you a full refund. That is how confident that we are that you will enjoy Riviera. So why should you go on us? Well, we are the only company to offer at least five cabins that have no single supplement. And we also have entire departures where we are exclusively for the solo traveler with no single supplement. We offer the most immersive itineraries, a total of 20 different on 10 rivers. We boast the youngest fleet of ships in Europe. We have a total of 12. We're extremely price competitive and our cabins are very spacious. The average French balcony is 183 square feet. And our boats are built and operated by Skiller of Switzerland, who is the preeminent boat builder in our business. This is just a brief example of some of the solo departures that we have. It goes across all of our itineraries, including the Christmas market. So our 12 vessels, this is just a schematic. We have an alternative dining room on board every vessel with no supplement to dine there. Some kind of a water element. It could be a jacuzzi or a plunge pool. And I, I personally, when I've done the Christmas markets, I love when it's snowing, swimming in the plunge pool or sitting in the jacuzzi with the snow coming down. It's great fun, but then I'm English. Uh, we have a massage or sauna and a gymnasium on every vessel. That's your first view of the ship. It's, uh, I would think it's considered to be traditionally elegant, but it's not stuffy or glitzy. Dining on board, it's open seating, open dining. You can come down to, to, during any two hour period for your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. A balcony, a French balcony cabin, or a walkout balcony cabin, just 269 square feet. Superior cabins are 247. The bulk of our accommodations, 85% are the French balcony with 183 square feet, and those beds can be divided. And the most economical cabin is the window cabin at 172 square feet. And it's this cabin that we use for no single supplement. All excursions included on board. Yuletide markets, we have 18 of them this year. So we can give you a, a selection from five nights, four days, or from uh, five nights, six days, or the traditional seven night cruises. Ten and seconds, we also Marilyn. have cruises that go over Christmas and New Year's. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail because uh, we're gonna be talking a little bit more about the wonderful Christmas markets. That's it. Thank you very much, Marilyn. 
Okay, so we are going to wrap up the uh, introduction stage with Pam Hoffey, uh, Managing Director of Avalon Waterways. Pam, please take it away. Thank you so much. All right. All right. So it was um, very fortuitous that we put the Avalon Envision, a photo of that ship at the start of our presentation, because just today, the USA Today uh, best uh, Top 10 best list came out and the Envision won number one best river cruise ship. So that's something we're really proud of. We had another ship in that top 10 list and that was uh, the Tranquility 2 uh, at number five. So we're certainly thrilled about that. And what's great about Avalon, uh, well, I'll give you a little history about us. We're part of the Globus Family of Brands, a company that started in 1928, uh, also family owned. I think you're going to see that that's also a little bit of a trend across the river industry as well. Um, we have a 100% consistent fleet of ships. So our ships are all the same. We started building this style of ship that we call a sweet ship in 2011 with a um, the Avalon Panorama, and we have a, our latest, the Avalon View, launching this year in 2021 on our 10th anniversary. And we haven't changed the design of our ships throughout this entire 10 years. And it really is, you know, our unique, um, our unique uh, position is our sweet ships. And it's one of our unique positions, I should say. And this is our, what makes these ships so award-winning is this Panorama Suite. And it's 200 square feet. And what probably stands out as you look at this image are a couple of things. So first of all, as I said, it's an entire fleet of the same type of uh, ships and 80% of our staterooms are this style of stateroom. So they are 200 square feet with the bed turned to face the view. On most river cruise ships, the beds face the wall. When we built the panorama, uh, 10 years ago, we thought, hmm, the views is what are what people come on river cruises for. Let's turn the bed and face that view. The other thing you'll notice is that 11 foot wide wall to wall floor to ceiling window and there's a seating area in front of it. And in order to have an exterior balcony on a river cruise ship, you actually have to take away interior space. And so we didn't want to do that. We wanted to have the best of both worlds for our guests. And so this is truly that. It allows you to open that window a full seven feet, sit in the seating area and use it as a balcony when you want it and close it when you don't. So especially when we're talking about winter and Christmas markets, this truly gives you the best of both worlds and that you can have that balcony experience if you want to open those windows, take your photos, but then you can close it and have the full use of the, that 200 square foot cabin. So this gives you a little bit more information about about our fleet. Um, we actually surveyed some of our guests. Uh, that, that stateroom, by the way, has won the best um, stateroom in river cruising four years in a row from Cruise Critic, which is something we're really proud of. But this slide and some of the statistics on here we're probably even more proud of. That 95% of respondents prefer Avalon's Panorama Suite to other cruise ship cabins, and 95% would sail with us again because of these Panorama Suites. So they truly are special. And, um, you know, as everyone has said, there is not a bad product among us, uh, but this is really what makes sailing on an Avalon ship in particular special. Now, in terms of the experience, um, you know, we have the small ships with an average of 150 people. At Christmas, we deck these ships out with um, holiday flair. We also have the protocols in place that have been talked about, which is so important right now to think about uh, as we're as we're in the time of COVID. Um, so you can rest assured with that. You can certainly follow up and get all the information you need on that. Uh, amazing service in a very relaxed um, way. We have, we call it relaxed luxury. It's not a lesser level of luxury. It means we don't have butlers hovering over you with white gloves, but more of a friendly and relaxed style of very professional and fabulous service. We also have flexible dining included excursions, um, fitness centers, and also an adventure host doing fitness classes. So all sorts of um, great experiences on board and ashore. Um, and I did put in a few slides to talk about the Christmas markets. I'm guessing Michael's gonna be telling me in a couple seconds that I'm out of time. We have a huge variety of Christmas markets cruises. My favorite happens to be on the Danube sailing between Vienna and Nuremberg. Um, you know, just the, the feeling that you get there, it's a, like a fairy tale in these in these places any time of year, but at Christmas with all of the lights and the candles and going 
as Kathy uh, from AMA said about, these truly are the local experiences. This isn't something that's just set up for tourists. And each market is different. And that's what's so wonderful is you could go on the Rhine and then come back and go on the Danube and you would be having a different experience. And you could go to Alsace, which we offer excursions there or cruises there and do the French markets and get yet a different experience. And I'm all about the food and the drinking. I'm not a huge... Uh, shopper. I'm all about what you're going to eat and drink at these markets. And there are different things. Nuremberg, it's these uh, little sausages that are the size of your finger and your guide will teach you how to order those. Uh, you order three in bread and I, I, you'd think I could remember how to order them. I can't. Luckily, there'd be a guide there with me to tell me how to do it again. So that's what you do in Nuremberg. Also, of course, I think most people know about the gingerbread in Nuremberg. And I think Kathy already talked about, please, add on that extension to Prague if you go on the Danube because the markets there are just incredible. And within walking distance of Old Town, this is the Old Town uh, uh, Hall, uh, excuse me, Square Market. Wenceslas Square Market is within five minutes walk. Um, really incredible markets. And uh, I said I was all about the food. This is the food you have to have <laughs> in Prague. Uh -huh. um, it's this I could remember what it's called. So a guide once told me it's called, uh, it's, it, I'm sure I'm not saying exactly right, but turtleneck, if you can remember that, it, that's how you say it. And it's dough with cinnamon and sugar and they are incredible. I probably ate one or two a day when I was there. So that's my tip if you're going to Prague. Thank you very much, Pam. And you did run out of time, but you were already into the Christmas market. So oh, okay. that was really talking right. about All our right. next subject. So thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All right, so that's everybody's elevator pitch, right? I really didn't have very much time for more than that. So good job, everyone. Thank you for, for participating in that. That's not easy. Uh, it's like one of those speed dating uh, <laughs> tables you go to sometimes. And, um, you know, Jen, I appreciate you saying that because if you haven't been on a river cruise or if you haven't been to uh, Christmas markets, uh, it is it is hard to know looking in a brochure or on a website or even listening to these very knowledgeable and experienced people talk about it. And the that's what a good travel advisor is for. And whether it's me or your local travel advisor, um, ideally uh, they have been on all of these river cruise lines and I have been on 90% of these river cruise lines. I haven't been on Riviera yet, and I haven't been on Scenic, uh, but I've been on all of the rest. And what that helps me to do is, you know, I have my own personal opinions about each line. And, you know, sometimes people come in and they say, well, what is the best river cruise line? And uh, there's not, that's not really the right question to ask. The really the right question to ask is what is the best river cruise line for you on this particular vacation? And it can change. It could depend on the river. It could depend on the itinerary. It could depend on the occasion. Uh, it, could, uh, it could depend on so many different factors. And half of those factors have to do with you. And I'm speaking to you as a client. And so my job is, and my agent's job is to get to know you what's important to you when you travel. And then I can think about the experiences I've had on these different river cruise lines and match them up. That's, if you had to put my job in a nutshell, it's a matchmaker, right? So my job is to match people up. So um, do I charge a fee? Yes, you know, you have to pay for that experience, but uh, I think you'll find it's well worth it uh, on an investment. A river cruise vacation is an investment while they are very good value. Um, you know, some people are, are surprised, you know, sticker shock sometimes, but I assure you all of these lines here today have a very good value proposition for what they offer. And each experience and nuance is something different. So that being said, oh, and I wanted to say, I'm going to share, uh, Kelly and I went on a, a Christmas markets river cruise a couple years ago, and I will send everybody that attended um, a link to that photo album uh, when I follow up with you. Uh, email tomorrow. So let's talk about, uh, we'll ask questions. We'll get to the questions in just a minute. Um, does anybody here have any type of Christmas markets memory or story or something fun they want to share? Just speak right up if you do. I actually have one. Okay. Um, 
It was um, it was actually fantastic, but unfortunately, I was also experiencing the low water issues in 2018. It was um, kind of November. Yeah, I was there for the Thanksgiving also, and um, I was super excited. I went there and I landed, and they said, "Sorry, but we're." not going to be cruising. You're going to be on the motor coach. I was with our scenic friend and I said, all right, well, I'll, I'll see what's happening. It was, I think, one of the best. I mean, I, of course, wanted to be on the river too, but the little towns, the it's again, it's like a magical. Every place that you go is magical. Thank you. Thank you, Oya. Anybody else? Kathy, go ahead. Kathy Brock. The market stall in the Budapest market uh, a great street food there, by the way, and that's a turtleneck. It, Pam, it's actually a tradelnik, but whatever works, it is the best pastry in the whole wide world. It just peels apart when you walk. But there's this wonderful little market stall in the Budapest market where there are handmade wooden toys. So I have to admit that all four of my grandchildren at one time or another have come home with a big wooden swords and wooden shields, much to their mother's dismay. <laughs> That's so true. You know, one thing I like is when you're in these Christmas markets and you actually find time to shop if you're not drinking blue vine and eating, you know, all of the wonderful food in these markets, which I could do nothing but that. Um, they're authentic toys made in that region that you are. And that's so different than some of the shops we go in here at home. You know, so I that's think so it's nice. almost impossible not to buy something. I mean, every stall is so beautifully decorated and the locals work all year making these these ornaments or, or toys or what have you, it, it, it's, your, it's almost your duty to shop because it's, it's so beautiful, it inspires you. You know, Vienna, they've been um, doing this since um, 1298, like 12th century. The Middle Ages, they've been yeah, doing the it Middle since ages. the Middle Ages, yeah. yep. It's a long it's time. Like it. It's a yep. long time, correct. <laughs> That's great. Anybody else want to share anything? Any any story? Kathy Lou? Yeah, sure. Um, I don't know if you can tell from my accent. I'm from Los Angeles. <laughs> and I, you know, growing up from LA, you know, we don't get snow. I moved from LA to <laughs> Miami. There's no snow there. It's just hot and humid. I took my parents on a Christmas market and we experienced our first snowfall um, of that season. And I have a photo and I don't have it uh, available here, but I have a photo of me in bed under beautiful linen um, facing the window and it's as we're passing by the scenery, the snow's coming down. It is just beautiful to experience. Um, but I mean, I'm a little biased. I mean, my first river cruise is on a Crystal River cruise. So, uh, you know, it makes the, the whole journey just that much more special for me. Um, but that was just my personal experience. I mean, I'm sure everyone's from everywhere uh, from the U.S. and you probably have snowfall and this is just, yeah, oh, come on, no big deal. <laughs> but for a Californian, it's huge. <laughs> I know, Michael. Oh, I was just going to say one of the things that hasn't been talked about is the music also, you know, that, that it happens at these markets. And I'm sure in many of our itineraries, we stay overnight in the ports to be able to spend evenings uh, out at the markets. I'm sure most people's itineraries do that as well. And just to be able to experience the entertainment and the music and the children's choirs, um, there are children's markets in a lot of these um, cities where they have carousels and Ferris wheels. And it, it truly is magical. There's no other way to put it other than magical. Like I, I always use the there. term, I always use the term that if you go on a Christmas market cruise and you don't get into the Christmas spirit, then your middle name has to be Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and it's so true. And, and another thing to note is that each one is different from the next. They're, they're not identical in any way and they have their own style and you get your own uh, mugs and they're different every year. And um, so many people collect them and um, y y some are huge. Some of these markets are huge. You can walk around for hours and others. We were in Brysac, I think, and there maybe were four or five stalls. It was a very small but it was still very local and the local people were there and it was still Christmassy and, and that Christmas spirit. 
Can I just bring up one point, Michael, that a couple of us here um, are actually doing Christmas market cruises over Christmas. And uh, it's not just not just Riviera. Uh, and Kathy mentioned that uh, the Christmas markets usually close just before Christmas. And that is true for many of the cities. But the itineraries that you know, we have at Riviera and I know uh, the other river cruise company has over Christmas itself, those markets would still be open because there are a few cities where the markets stay open throughout the Christmas and New Year's period. So you'll see that the, the cities that we visit over those Christmas market, Christmas cruises, uh, the, the markets are still open. Wonderful. And European countries honor a tradition that keeps the lights on, even if the markets are closed like New Year's, the lights in these cities and towns stay up mm. until Little Christmas, the Feast of the Epiphany, the feast, uh, the 6th of January. So even a New Year's cruise, you're gonna have that magical experience as well. For sure. You're on mute, Kelly. Yeah. Okay, so, um, we're gonna, we have several questions to get to. Does anybody wanna share? Is there an itinerary you didn't get to share that you wanna show really quickly, anybody? like to share so one. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Kathy, show yours. Thank you. Uh, let me see if I can just pop the screen up. This is, um, I know this presentation is about Christmas markets. Well, she's looking for that. You know, yes. one thing I think we didn't bring up is it's not just the Christmas markets because these little towns have such great history. And when you go into the towns with the local guides, to me, it's twofold. You're getting the whole tour experience as well, not to mention the Christmas markets. And I, and I think I didn't realize that the first one I did, I thought it was all just Christmas markets, but it's really a whole experience with learning about these countries and, and everything else, as well as the Christmas. That's very true. I mean, let's face it, when you're in Budapest, um, there's a lot to see there other than just the Christmas markets. True. Yeah, can you see my screen? Yep, yeah, go ahead, Kathy. Okay, great. Yeah, I just want to feature our one uh, voyage that over that goes over New Year's in Amsterdam. We're docked in this beautiful area where the fireworks show off, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful itinerary. So this is something I want to add to the holiday um, spirit, holiday time. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's get to some questions, guys. And if you think of anything else that you wanted to add about the Christmas mar markets, by all means, you know, speak up. I know one day Kelly and I um, uh, and a couple other people on the cruise, we went and got some cheeses and some French bread. We were in Strasbourg and um, we just brought them back to the ship and had a little picnic in the middle of the day. And so that's lovely. They do have all the they do have tours and you do see everything. And then of course you can relax and walk around the Christmas markets. And normally each of these cruise lines is gonna have a representative there nearby if you have questions or you get lost or you wanna go back to the ship or what have you. So uh, you're always in good hands and uh, it's more relaxed, I think. Um, and, you, and you do have time to do, go back and do things like a little picnic or just shopping. And uh, I, I like it, it's, it's, a nice, it's a nice type of river cruise. Okay, so we have tons of questions, um, and they're not all Christmas related. I will start uh, this one from Eileen. Uh, how would the Danube River cruise be in August? At certain times of the year, the locks need to disembark and travel by land. No. All right, I'll, let me rephrase this question to you. Do you feel that is there's any difference in river cruising in August as far as water levels or lock functionality? Not normally. Well, well it's, it's, it's are beautiful on these rivers. Yeah. From spring with the flowers, for summer, fall with the beautiful foliage and the vineyards, and then of course the magical Christmas markets. There's no wrong time to go on river no. cruise. I, I, th I think what the, refer the, 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 the client is referring to, it was about two years ago when we had a problem with low water and it was the worst in 60 years and river cruising got a bad rap for that one period of time. But, but normally we sail through without any problems anytime. And August is lovely, it's hotter, but it's lovely. 
Yeah, and we and we talk about this, but even when there's always a, a possibility, no matter when you go, that a lot could be out of commission, or sure. uh, the water level could be too low, or it could be too high. And guess what? All of these companies on the line have more than one ship and their, you know, their That's fleet, right. <laughs> and so they they're always going in opposite directions on these itineraries. So um, if 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 there is a section of the river you can't go to, no big deal. You you, you you, they might have you swap ships and you'll have your cruise director go with you and you'll have a very similar, if not identical cabin. And so the, these lines are very good at those types of logistics. So I, I, I tell people, don't worry about that. You're going to see Europe and we're talking about Europe right now. And what a lovely way you unpack one time and you have professionals around you all the time and, and people that are like you and what they're looking for. And it's just a wonderful vacation. Okay, um, the next question from Richard is, when do you think we will been, begin cruising again? And do you think all ports of entries will be fully opened? Who would like to take that? Mm -hmm. I'm booked for August. <laughs> we all have our crystal balls right here. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's tough. I mean, um, yeah, yeah, that's a tough question to, to answer because I mean, Ocean cruising, we plan to be back in the waters in July, um, but at least at Crystal Yacht Expedition, each one has a different um, start date, so it's really tough to tell. And we're back in Egypt already. I'm mean, starting April 1st back in Egypt. So we really are starting, starting back again already. That is great news, Kathleen. Yeah. I think hey, it would be safe to book something in the fall since we don't know when Europe is going to open, but the fact that Spain is opening now to Americans, that's really good news. And if we think about it, you know, we're ahead on the vaccine game. They're much yeah. further behind. Mm -hmm. So they don't want us coming in if we can spread the disease, even though we might be vaccinated. I, I know I have clients that are booked on river cruises in Europe in July, and they're still very hopeful, and I am too. I mean, I, I can't tell yeah. you that they will go, but we're very hopeful that they will. Um, we're, okay. we're very hopeful for the end of June, July. We're all hopeful. I, Excellent. I was just going to add that there. I was just on a call with CLIA and the European Union last week where they are talking about some sort of immunity passport system where someone has to prove that they have a vaccine or a negative test or have recently recovered from COVID. So there are conversations happening. There is effort taking place to open the borders safely for travel again. So when that will happen is unknown, but all the things that have been said about Spain opening, you know, certainly um, gives hope for this summer. And I think there's definitely um, interest from your, the European Union to have the summer travel season happen in a safe way. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, are there any COVID policies with the river cruises uh, 21 or 22 itineraries, such as evidence of vaccinations or testing results, and kind of covered that a little bit. Um, and it's not just up to the river cruise companies. Think about where they're going. You know, there's yeah. so many different jurisdictions, right? Um, and what will be required? I, you know, I, I don't have a crystal ball either. You guys have any thoughts on that? It's also up to the airlines. Yeah. It's true. I mean, I would, if you're getting, if you're fortunate enough to have a vaccination, I would certainly keep that paperwork because that seems like, at least for the short term, that's going to, that's going to be a key to travel. How I see like. vaccination is like any inoculation. If you're traveling to West Africa or whatever it is, um, you're going to need those vaccinations anyway. Um, but at Crystal, we have mandated that vaccines are required in, to, in order to cruise on a Crystal vessel. So that is just a hard, fast rule for us. Um, do any of the providers offer cabins that are triples? We have an adult child with a disability that cannot stay in her own cabin. Yes, we do. We have connecting cabins, triple cabins, and suites that will accommodate a family of four. We Great. do as well for our family programs. Same. Great. Um, I don't know if we can answer this. With COVID, after you disembark from your cruise and want to stay an additional three nights, are the cities requiring a 14-day quarantine before you fly home? <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, don't, 
I don't know. There could be a particular country or jurisdiction. All I can tell you is they're, they're changing every day. So whatever it is that people and countries are doing today, it's probably fair to say they're not going to be doing it in 30 days from now. They're going to be doing something different. And hopefully it's just doing it in a better way, a more effective way, and what's safe for everybody. I mean, we all want to travel again. We all want to get out. And we just hope, my ho I hope that um, as more and more people are vaccinated in our country and around the world, that it becomes a safer place to be in, in general. Um, so there, there are certainly countries with quarantines, but I see quarantines being changed out for tests. And now I see tests being changed out for vaccine proof. So there's so many things uh, moving. Uh, it's hard to predict. But anytime you go travel out of your own uh, neck of the woods, just be adaptable and change. And that makes you a good traveler. Um, I'll just add in while you're doing that. Um, I, first of all, we just wanted to thank everybody for your time. Your time is valuable and we appreciate um, we appreciate our panelists. They're taking time to speak to us and to our guests, clients. And we also appreciate everybody who tuned on to learn a little bit more about um, river cruising and Christmas market cruising. I echo the sentiments of so many people here. Magical is, I've been racking my brain all day of what adjective to use and, and that is it. It's magical. It's like a fairy tale. Nobody mentioned the potato pancakes with the smoked salmon on top. I don't know why I haven't heard about that, but um, a warm potato pancake while you're looking at these lights and having a glue vine, that's a little piece of heaven right there. So, but we, we, we value our partnerships and, and and more importantly, our friendships with all of you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you so much for putting it together. Thank you. Yes, thank you. All right, just I'm going to I'm going to do these last two questions, uh, and the rest I will get back to you. Um, I we're not able to answer all of these. Some are pretty specific, um, but I'll answer them by email. Uh, this is for I'm a Waterways Kathy. Considering the effects that the pandemic has caused regarding travel in the future, what things has I'm a Waterways done to address river cruising? in the post-COVID world? Well, the protocols we put into place last year for the four months we sailed, um, and I, it, we intend to go back onto those riv that river with European guests again this May. Um, the protocols were facial coverings when you were moving around the ship, but not when you were seated anywhere or up on the top deck. Uh, there was social distancing. We limited the capacity of the ships uh, to less than normal. We already have very small excursions, so even smaller now, the guide's got the microphone, you've got the chip in your, you don't have to be close. Um, the, the main thing, the sanitizing, the luggage, everything like that happened, uh, and again, that, that non-recirculated air, so that's huge. We did it before, I'm quite sure we'll do it again if we have to, but who knows, folks, this thing could break right open and we wouldn't have to use all these protocols, but each one of us is developing the protocols. So we'll be ready to put them into place when we're able. I think we should look to Kathy Lou, since their name is Crystal, maybe she has the crystal ball. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> okay. One. <laughs> Last question. Anybody can answer if you want. This is from Clancy. He says, this is not a fair or polite question, but I have often wondered why river cruises are more expensive than ocean cruises. Everything's included. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Sure. And there's yeah. fewer yeah. people. Every, yeah. fewer more people intimate, right? Less people? Much less more people. intimate. Yeah. Yeah. Less people, more <laughs> intimate. Take the cost of the ocean cruise, okay? Look at the cost of the river cruise. Go back to the ocean cruise price and add the cost of excursions in every single port. Add the cost of the specialty restaurants on board. Add the cost of uh, the beverage package. Add the cost of the Wi-Fi package. Then you are pretty well equal. I think Clarence's question came from the point we assume of the mega ships, the large ships. Uh, the only thing they have in common with a river cruise is the word cruise. But, you know, if you look at some mid-sized ships like Viking or Crystal has, um, then you're going to see almost the same types of inclusions as their river product and pretty close to the same per day cost. So it's not that every ocean cruise is less, uh, just those mega ones, which are um, the mass markets, you know, they have their place, certainly. 
um, and they're made for economy of scale. Like anything else, you get what you pay for. Um, you know, uh, we also have small ships uh, and some of the people on the call today are, have really small ships. And I'm talking about um, scenic uh, Eclipse and the Emerald, um, Crystal Yachts, Talc has uh, tons of small ships that are great. And these uh, could be even more inclusive. Uh, and because of additional expenses of ocean cruising and having that small number of intimate uh, groups of people, uh, they could be more expensive than a river cruise. So um, those those answers were great. Oh, and when we just take the assumption that we were talking about an ocean cruise, but um, let us keep in mind that river cruises sometimes are the same price as a more comparable type of ocean cruise. Well, if anybody has more questions uh, for the panel, just send them to me, um, michael at mgatravel.com. If you're watching this recorded, please hit the subscribe button, leave us a comment, hit a like, um, we'll get back to you. And uh, for those people that have already left questions, I will be reaching out to you as well. Uh, these could be questions about river cruises, Christmas markets, finding the right fit for you, just travel in general, uh, post-COVID world, you know, all of those things. But just reach out to us, 843-279-0310, mgatravel.com. Uh, where you can find our blog. We, we blog a lot on river cruises uh, and it's called the Traveler's Rest. We'd love for you to join us there. Um, it is officially past cocktail hour. It is officially the weekend right now. Um, I thank all of our attendees and clients who joined us today. I thank all the people that are watching on our recording. And uh, I wanna especially thank our panelists today um, for your time. Uh, we had uh, Kathy from Crystal and Jen from Talc, Oya at Emerald, Kathy at Animal Waterways, Eric at Viking, Kristen Avalon, Pam Hoffey from Avalon Waterways, Kathleen Levy from Uniworld, and Marilyn Conway from Riviera. Thank you all so very much for taking your time to, to be with us this afternoon. Uh, it's been informative, and I think uh, hopefully people on our callers uh, on the line know a little bit more about river cruising and your unique brand. So Thank you, you all Michael. have a great product. Thank I'm, so I'm much proud to partner Thank with you. all of you guys. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Uh, be safe. Thanks, have a everyone. great weekend, everybody. Bye.